Hi, folks, and thanks for joining me. You know, summer's moving in quickly. We're supposed to hit uh, right at 100 degrees today. Heat indices around uh, 112, and next week looks the same. So I went to the uh, shed, grabbed one of the uh, early to mid-1930 radio receivers that I've never uh, restored or touched. It's a Knight. That was a trade name for uh, Allied Electronics out of the uh, Chicago area. I don't think they did their own manufacturing, just looking around at some um, schematics. I think Sentinel probably made this radio for the guys. And uh, of course it was branded and sold by Allied with the uh, Knight name here. Anyway, it's a cool looking design. And I did find some advertisements here that I'll pop up. You guys can see this is a walnut veneer and you can see it's rolled over. And the ends of the radio, I believe to be solid wood are made out of uh, red gum. So I don't see much of a reddish tint there, but uh, maybe when we go back, we'll add some, uh, a little bit of a red tint, very light red tint. Looks like the original grill cloth. It does have the uh, green eye or tuning eye. A little bit of the uh, decorative trim here will have to be rebuilt. You can see it's missing as well as it's loose. The uh, grill bars, which is pretty cool. I've reproduced these in the past for other radios. They're in place, uh, just loose. So uh, not in bad shape, really the cabinet. I think it'll strip well. So my plans, I've got like three or four receivers that uh, need a refinish. Uh, getting into the uh, heat of the uh, summer and my time is also limited in the shop these days. I think I'll uh, try to pass on the uh, refinish work until late summer, early fall when the uh, humidity levels are more favorable. Of course, if I catch some good weather in between and have some time, I may go ahead and strip and uh, tackle uh, one of the three, I believe, that needs some work. Let me flip this thing around. We'll take a look at the back side here, including the uh, cobwebs that come along with it. So again, untouched. And let me bring this back around so you guys can see the uh, model number here that's showing up a 98 alpha echo dash 184k so i didn't find an exact schematic for that model number but they say that's not uncommon with the uh, night receivers it's just a, a standard six tube two band receiver so I have a uh, matching schematic we can use as a guide and then we can determine maybe what's different with the uh, published schematic that I found versus uh, what's in the radio. Let me go ahead and get the uh, knobs off. I'll uh, pull this thing out of the uh, cabinet. We'll take a look at the uh, chassis itself and see if it's been worked on, which I believe it has been. If you look right here real close, there's a, a repair tag. And I think it said Montana. So that's kind of neat. We'll look at that, see what the name of the company um, is or was for that period. That maybe did a little work on this receiver at some point in its life. I appreciate you guys watching. Again, a little night six tuber. Two band advertised to uh, receive three bands even though it only has a uh, two band selector kind of a uh, funny marketing trick that was done back in the day it does have the uh, six inch electrodynamic loudspeaker so it should sound well assuming that the uh, loudspeaker is in good shape And one knob to go here. I'm going to have to uh, tilt this over. It looks like the set screws on the uh, underneath side. And let me get in here and see if I can get this green eye. Nice being a little stubborn. Let me uh, 
get a closer look in here and get my head in the cabinet. There we go. 6G5. That's what's labeled. We'll check that in just a bit. And I'm not sure if there's a speaker plug or not. I'm going to have to look at that closer. I may end up having to remove the uh, six inch loudspeaker from the uh, cabinet itself if it's hardwired in. Only two fasteners holding the chassis in and uh, this one's already backed out. And this one doesn't look that tight. Very cool. You may not be able to see that well from this angle, but there is an old uh, speaker plug. And I want to preserve this little tag here that just popped off. The old rubber line cord. You know, that very well may be original. And you guys saw just a minute ago, the little important tag fell off the uh, back of the chassis. I'll uh, preserve this and uh, place it back on. Let's look at that repair tag right here. Let me zoom in on it and see what it shows. Very cool. Joe's radio service. Joseph O or Joseph Q. Torgerson. Looks like Fairview or Fitzview, Montana. We'll have to do some uh, research on that. See if we can find anything on the history of the uh, repair shop. Pretty cool. Let's look at the uh, model number here a little bit closer now. And there's a look at the uh, model number and the loudspeaker. Another number here on the chassis for reference, the uh, 98 Alpha Echo 4312. And it looks like they're missing the uh, rectifier tube, the Type 80, the uh, IF filters or transformers. antenna coil in this position and the uh, tuning condenser. It was stiff but not seized. Definitely some surface rust that we'll have to uh, clean up but uh, not bad. Cool artwork there on the uh, night dial scale. That should uh, clean up well. It's a little warped. Hopefully we can get it to lay flat again. Definitely a rusty old power transformer as far as the housing. Hopefully the uh, health of the power transformer is good. Very small, which was common back for that period. Again, to keep the uh, cost down. So many of the transformers, of course, were undersized, ran hot. And you notice this one said 110. I'll probably put a dropping resistor or other methods to lower the uh, line voltage some, not to uh, stress the transformer, assuming the uh, transformer is good. Let's flip this thing over and see what it looks like. See if we can identify some of the repairs that uh, Joe back in Montana made. Uh, just looking at it, uh, you can see some of the uh, capacitors have been replaced. You got this big guy here, probably the original that was uh, placed in the receiver. Looks like it's been cut out on this side. This end is uh, disconnected. Another electrolytic was put in for the uh, B plus filtering. And uh, definitely some of the uh, Mallory capacitors. It's hard to say on the resistors themselves. I don't see anything uh, new. So they may be original. Should be a fairly straightforward restoration, or at least I'm hoping so. You never know when you get into one of these things. What you'll find, what you uncover, that's what makes the uh, hobby uh, fun, enjoyable, and rewarding at the same time. So more to come soon, guys, on this little 
night receiver. We'll say 1937, 1938, somewhere in that era. In the next video, we'll start doing some uh, testing just to um, evaluate the health of the uh, power transformer, the IF transformers, the antenna coil, oscillator coil, and the uh, loudspeaker output transformer. Just make sure we're good there. There's no uh, showstoppers or other things that we'll have to uh, figure out how to mitigate along the way. Appreciate you guys watching.